championships. Uh, she has been using Vanillux uh, for a while now, so she mm -hmm. is definitely, I would say she may be one of the world's best Vanillux players. Although Vanillux did have a showing in Asia, in the Asian circuits. Really? Yeah, it did. All right, well, we'll have to see if Trista can continue to uh, be the world's best Vanillux player. A strong placement here in uh, Indianapolis would definitely go a long way towards that. Uh, but it should be an interesting setup here. That Metagross, uh, which it really feels like Metagross was the, you know, was the anti-meta play for this tournament. It's coming back. I mean, we've seen a lot of Metagross on stream, and uh, one thing that Metagross kind of lost when it was so powerful back in Diamond Pearl, mm -hmm. uh, Black and White, was that Steel-type resists Dark. Yeah. But now Metagross is weak to Dark, and, well, Muck is going to be happy and knock some yeah, stuff Muck off. Muck is now part Dark-type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Muck's going to knock some stuff off. So uh, I'm going to be excited to watch how that... Uh, matchup goes between Metagross and Muck, because Muck is also a very bulky Pokemon. Yeah, Muck is a really interesting Pokemon we haven't seen much of at this tournament uh, that I was expecting to, to see a little bit more, uh, because it's just so powerful and bulky. You know, that knockoff, uh, getting, getting buffed, is such a good ability, especially since a lot of these Pokemon are relying on their items. And if you can knock off one of those Pinch Berries, then you've basically just dealt 50% damage. Yeah, and you can also knock off the Porygon 2's Eevee Light to kind of weaken it, mm -hmm. uh, or in terms of a in terms of its defenses, you can weaken it and make it a bit easier to kind of KO. Absolutely. Uh, Salamence is not going to be a Pokemon that you really want to be able to bring against Vanillix because Vanillix is just going to, you know, blizzard away, going to give that Salamence a brain freeze. Absolutely. And here we go. Game one now of round eight. Tristan Medine versus Michael Lanzano. Uh, should be a very interesting match. And both of these players are playing for their tournament life, most likely, at 5 and 2. Intense, just like just like last year at the <laughs> World like Championship. So this is such a hype match between Trista and Michael. Uh, we do see the Tapu Koko over on Michael's side. It is going to be the shiny Tapu Koko, which mm -hmm. means that it's going to be locked into a timid nature. Mm -hmm. So, well... That kind of gives away, but it also depends on how you train it. So a lot of players right. are actually using the shiny Tapu Koko to bluff what kind of Tapu Koko it is. To bluff that it's uh, not as offensive? Or yeah. bluff that it is offensive and then run a more support set? Yeah. Throw on a possible assault vest to provide some uh, setup, like a sky drop, and then sword dance with the Garchomp. So that actually looks like a position that uh, really Michael can set up for if it is the right Tapu Koko. Yeah, we'll have to see as the Tapu Koko on Michael's side gets a chance. But it looks like Trista's Tapu Koko is actually just going to go for a Reflect, making her team stronger against physical moves. Uh, Michael will just go for the Volt Switch to deal a little bit of damage to Snorlax, but Trista's showing Reflect on her Tapu Koko. That is an option that we do not see often at all. All, but makes a lot of sense if you're just trying to protect that uh, Snorlax. Ooh, Michael Salamence going with in. Salamence. Good Intimidate. Will be able to take a little bit of, uh, of attack off of Snorlax. And Garchomp will be able to get this Earthquake off through a Reflect onto Tapu Koko and Snorlax. And so Tapu Koko still takes a lot of damage, but does not get knocked out. And Snorlax takes barely any high horsepower, though, into what used to be Tapu Koko. Now Salamence whiffs. Yeah, good switch right there, and also a good reflect from Trista right there, because otherwise that Tapu Koko would have been knocked out. Interesting tech move from Trista, mm -hmm. uh, kind of providing a little bit of support for that Snorlax. Uh, Snorlax does have access to Curse, but maybe in this case, since Snorlax is being protected by the Reflect, maybe Curse isn't really an option. Maybe it is going to be the Belly Drum variant. Yeah, I mean, if you have a Reflect up, you know, getting the Belly Drum doesn't seem quite so risky anymore. Yeah, and this is definitely a position where Vanillix wants to be out on the field. Uh, <laughs> maybe Trista was trying to scare away the Salamence and Garchomp, but Michael's kind of thinking otherwise. Michael's like, eh, I think it's pretty safe here. Yeah, really gutsy play to have both of those Pokemon when you know that there's a Vanillux on uh, the other side. But the reason why is pretty obvious when that Metagross comes out. Yeah, and of course that switch right there was really just expecting it to be possible Vanillux switching just to respect mm -hmm. it and be able to counter it on the spot and also resist a uh, possible Blizzard. So now we see the Gigavolt Havoc. So yeah. it's going to be targeting down what I believe is going to be that Salamence slot. Yeah, the Gigavolt Havoc coming out on Trista's side from her Tapu Koko. Uh, will be dealing damage to the Salamence. Uh, a good amount of damage with the Terrain Boost. Not Ooh. enough to pick up the KO, though. Salamence is able to get off its Bulldoze, which will hit that Metagross and activate a Weakness Policy. This Bulldoze Weakness Policy Metagross team is very popular at this tournament and has been able to do quite a bit of work. The Bulldoze is super effective on Trista's uh, Tapu Koko. 
and does deal damage to Snorlax, but Snorlax go went for the recycle, trying to get below 50% and then reuse that berry, not able to do so. Tapu Koko barely hanging on, though, with that three hit points, uh, but with that speed drop, may still be vulnerable. That's and, of course, with Metagross's bullet punch. That's a huge speed drop right there, because otherwise uh, this Tapu Koko could pick up this KO on Salamence, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Unfortunate whiff right there from that recycle. Yeah. Because, you know, Tristan was probably expecting that the Snorlax would activate its barrier and then, you know, have it ready for the next turn to be able to deal with this Metagross just a little bit better. Mm hmm. But again, this Bulldoze Salamence Metagross team, interesting to say the least. <laughs> Salamence just goes for a flamethrower onto that Tapu Koko since Tapu Koko had that Bulldoze speed drop. Will go down now. Ooh. Metagross showing Hammer Arm from Michael's side. Onto Snorlax, plenty of damage to pick up the KO on that Snorlax. And Michael taking two KOs that turn in a very strong position to take this first game. Yeah, and it's going to come down to what Trissa has in the back. Uh, if it is the Vanillix, that's unfortunate because it's not going to enjoy facing off against that Metagross at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Garchomp and Muck are the only other Pokemon that I think can deal with it, so we do have Garchomp hit the field. All right, well, Garchomp and Vanillox out on the field now. Uh, Vanillox setting the hail with its snow warning. It's not just Nine Tails. <laughs> Ice Cream can do it too. Other Pokemon do it as well. So uh, the Garchomp does threaten the Metagross, but it depends on what item Trista decided to put on this Vanillox. Yeah. Uh, back in Toronto, she opted for the Choice Scarf, which means that if this is the exact same Vanillox from Toronto, she will not be able to protect. So we already Metagross saw weakness position. policy go off. Mm -hmm. Here's that bullet punch from the weakness policy boosted Metagross into Vanillax. Is it going to be enough? It's Ooh, not enough. Ooh, the reflect. Vanillax with the reflect staying up on the field. Blizzard onto Salamence and onto Metagross. Picks up the KO onto Salamence easily and deals a little bit of damage onto Metagross. Tapu Koko gave oh. once. Oh, and this Earthquake coming out from Garchomp will hit the Metagross and also the Vanillax. And it is going to pick up the KO on her own Vanillax. And Metagross just barely hanging on as well. Yeah, and you know, I was thinking maybe if she still had access to a Tectonic Rage, that would be a good time mm -hmm. to use it. But unfortunately, the Gigavolt Havoc yeah, was already Tapu used Coco. earlier. So that is so unfortunate for Trissa. She does have the pieces uh, mm -hmm. in order to pick up the KO, and that's good information for both players to know that that Reflect actually prevents a Weakness Policy Metagross from picking up the KO with a Bullet Punch. Yeah, and of course, uh, Metagross just barely hanging on there uh, after the Hail damage. We'll have one more turn to try and get some damage in on this Garchomp, unless Trissa just decides to protect her Garchomp right now, pick up the KO with that Hail, and then try to move on. It's not over just yet. If this Tapu Koko can pick up the KO with the Dazzling Gleam, that would be enough, but now Metagross just goes for a Bullet Punch here. Yeah, Bullet Punch onto Garchomp. No Protect coming out. The Rough Skin actually going to pick up the KO. That's going to make That's it a full power Earthquake. Full power Earthquake coming into this Tapu Koko. But also, Michael will be able... Oh, only has Nature's Madness. No Dazzling Gleam to use here. So basically acting like a Super Fang and reducing Garchomp's HP by half. Earthquake at full power will connect with Tapu Koko. And now Michael's final Pokemon is going to have to be able to beat this Garchomp. It is another Garchomp. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be that time of year. Garchomp time. <laughs> So, yeah, if it is Ooh, reflect the opposing Garchomp, then, well, uh, Michael still has access to his uh, Z move, can easily just go for a Tectonic Rage to ensure a KO. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you think that your Garchomp can just pick up the KO with Earthquake, and you don't want to reveal that you have the Tectonic Rage, and maybe it's on something else, mm -hmm. then you go for that. But uh, close. Uh, the issue there was Trista needed to preserve her Vanillux. Mm -hmm. You got to save the ice cream for last. You got to save it for, it's like the dessert, right? You want you don't want to, not, not right beats. off the bat. Trista outspeeds, at least for this turn. Deals the Earthquake back to Garchomp. Would be a two-hit KO, but Michael just going to go for the easy, clean win with the Tectonic Rage. Pick up the KO onto Trista's Garchomp and force a game two. Yep, and going back to the drawing board, Trista's going to have to preserve that Vanillux. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael played pretty risky bringing both of his Dragon-type Pokemon, knowing that Trista did have that Vanillux, but uh, was able to get his Metagross in a position to really make sure that, that Vanillax wasn't as threatening as it could be. Yeah, and it's going to come down to some mind games right now, too, about how to react towards this team, because you wouldn't expect Michael to bring Salamence and Garchomp mm -hmm. versus a team with Vanillax on it. <laughs> no. Right? Uh, especially now that we know that it is Choice Scarf. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, if Trista decides Michael's going to bring the exact same Pokemon, she could easily just bring Vanillax. But at the same time, maybe Michael's like, well, I've showed my hand. 
Mm-hmm. Now it's time for me to change it up. Even though I won, right? it's still time for me to change it up. You know, Just bring Metagross, bring Gigalith to counteract the weather. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, Gigalith and Sand would enjoy facing off against Vanillix as well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those questions. Like, Michael already won when she brought Vanillix. Uh, Vanillix wasn't able to get in on the ideal turn. Right. But Vanillix was still brought. And he still brought both of his Dragon-type Pokemon and was still able to get that win uh, in the end. It was a little bit closer than I think it might have might have expected from some of those first couple of turns, but uh, still being able to pull off the win, you have to wonder if your game plan needs to change that much in the first place. I think one thing to note for Trista is going to be the fact that that Gigavolt Havoc in the Electric Terrain did not pick up the KO mm-hmm. on Salamence. If it's ever in that position, again, you're better off saving that uh, Z-move that Z move for just a little bit later. You know, mm-hmm. Have Vanillix take care of the Salamence. Have Vanillix try to take care of that Garchomp. And instead, uh, you know, save your Tectonic Rage for a chance. If your Gardashomp even has Tectonic Rage, Mm -hmm. save it for a chance in order to use it against that very powerful Metagross. Yeah, and so you don't have to knock out your own Pokemon, even with a Reflect Up. Yeah. (laughs) Gardashomp still deals damage. Also, uh, Trista was never able to set up Snorlax. Mm -hmm. Kind of just high horsepowered into the Salamence Switch. Yeah. And fortunately, didn't do much damage at all. Got a frustration off. And that's really it. Yeah. So in this game that Triss is moving on to in game two, uh, you know, definitely find some more opportunities to try to have that Snorlax be able to set up. Mm -hmm. You know, she had the pieces with the Reflect. Right. You know, that could have been a great turn for Snorlax to uh, go for Belly Drum, Curse, whatever setup move that it actually has. You know, maybe it is Reflect with Curse to to boost its defenses by, like, a lot. (laughs) You never know. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, we are getting into game two now. Trista needs this win in order to keep her hopes alive of finishing 7-2. and two. If Michael wins this match, he will advance at 6-2 and two and then need to win one more to guarantee his spot in Day 2 of Swiss. And it looks like we are going to have the Vanillix lead this time from Trista and does catch the, the Salamence on Michael's lead. Yeah, and Michael right now needs to move on to Day 2 if he wants the chance at the World Championships, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Coming in, he needs a deep nationals champ, nationals, or sorry, deep internationals run mm-hmm. in order to secure his world's invite. So this is better position for Trista. Uh, you know, Vanillix for sure is going to be blizzarding things. Uh, you do have to watch out. Maybe Gigalith. Yeah, you have to worry about Gigalith. Uh-huh. You also have to worry about Metagross switching in too. So it's an easy switch for Michael if uh, he decided to change it up. Go with Gigalith, or if he didn't change it up, you know, Metagross can still come in for that silence easily. Mm-hmm. But you also have to watch out because maybe Tapu Koko will decide to target down with a very powerful uh, Gigavolt Havoc. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did see the Reflect from Tapu Koko. Probably not too worried about setting up the Reflect right now, facing down both the Salamence and the Tapu Koko. Uh, a lot of the Salamences that we've been seeing have been specially based. Um, but it looks like Salamence isn't going to stick around at all anyway. Just going to switch out for the Metagross uh, to tank a free Blizzard coming out from that Vanillux. So Blizzard coming out onto Tapu Koko and Metagross dealing a little bit of damage to both Pokemon. Yep, there's the Gigavolt Havoc. Yeah, the Gigavolt Havoc again. And if it was targeting down that Salamence, she may have targeted down now the Metagross. Yeah, and I think that was a very smart play, you know. Uh, if Salamence stays in, okay, I get the KO. Mm-hmm. If it switches out, I hit whatever switches in with a Gigavolt Havoc, whether yeah. it be the Gigalith, whether it be It's the... definitely not going to be a Garchomp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! But it's actually just on the Tapu Koko. It's just going to deal a lot of damage back to Tapu Koko, but still not enough to pick up the KO. Michael is just going to fire back with his own Tapu Koko's Thunderbolt. Deals a lot of damage to that Vanillux, and definitely within bullet punch range. Yeah, and, well, if that Gigavolt Havoc did hit into that Metagross, that would have been a completely different game. Mm -hmm. But now this Vanillix is heavily threatened by this Metagross. So Vanillix has to stay out. Uh, you you got to switch it out and preserve it for a little bit later to face off against that Salmons that you've already seen. So Mm -hmm. now it's going to come down to resource management by Trista. Yeah, but and she has on the position where she needs to switch that Vanillix out. So Michael has the momentum, has the ability to make Trista to react to his plays now, and that's always the the worst place to be if you're one of those if you're one of these top tier players. Yeah, so uh, boy, uh, you could also set up reflect using this turn to kind of set up a little bit to help deal with this Metagross because, mm-hmm. uh, well, if you have Garchomp in the back, you're forced to Earthquake to deal with Metagross. So yeah, uh, if you have Muck in the back, well, you can knock it off. All right, well, as expected, Trista will switch Vanillux out for Garchomp. 
Uh, so Garchomp will be out on the field while Metagross goes for that Bullet Punch. Uh, will take the rough skin damage, I believe, from this Pokemon. Yep. Uh, so slowly adding extra chip damage to Metagross. Tapu Koko will go for Reflect this turn uh, to make sure that that Metagross can't really deal that much damage to her Garchomp or her Tapu Koko. Uh, but Michael di does have that Nature's Madness that he already showed in Game 1, uh, cutting Garchomp's health in half. Yeah, so this is a little bit better position, but you do have to watch out for your own Tapu Koko mm -hmm. uh, if you're Trista, because you can Earthquake. Uh, Bullet Punch will for sure will not be able to pick up the KO. Mm -hmm. um, you, I don't believe Tapu Koko really has anything that it can throw at it, so uh, Garchomp right now really wants the Earthquake. Yeah, but we already saw the Salamence in the back switching in with that Intimidate and the Flying type. Uh, you have to imagine that that's the easy play here, which, of course... None of these plays are easy, but that's sort of the obvious one that leaps out, uh, which a player like Michael's probably thinking, I can't do that. That's the easy play. That's the obvious play. I need yeah. to figure something else out. Got to deal. Got to deal with the Metagross uh, if you want that Vanillix to be able to easily come back in. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something that Trista has to try to figure out. An Earthquake with a Protect. Oh, mm -hmm. Metagross protecting instead, though. Yeah, Metagross just staying in and protecting. Michael noticing that Trista has a pretty regularly used Earthquake on her own Pokemon throughout this set. Uh, so hoping to catch another Earthquake into Trista's Tapu Koko. But because of Trista's Sky Drop, uh, both Tapu Koko avoid that Earthquake. And in fact, only Metagross uh, would have taken damage, but is protected by the Protect. Yeah, so right there, Trista using the Sky Drop as a sort of pseudo protect. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sky Drop on the way down would probably pick up the KO on top of Coco from Easy. this range easily. And now, well, Garchomp has to protect here because yeah. it can't Earthquake because Top of Coco is going to come down from this guy, KO the other Top of Coco, unless. You're just trying to set up a play where you just need to get rid of that Metagross. Yeah, well, Garchomp is starting to take a lot of hail damage. I mean, Reflect is still up, but uh, a few turns of just, you know, you know, protecting and uh, moving around, and you're likely to end up in a position where Garchomp could be taken out by that Bullet Punch. Instead, Metagross is going to switch out for Salamence, like we mentioned, get the Intimidate off onto Garchomp, and of course have the Flying Typing so that it will be immune to an Earthquake coming up. Skydrop does pick up that KO on Michael's Tapu Koko. Garchomp going for the Fire Fang this time. Showing Fire Fang didn't show that first time uh, in the first game. Not very effective onto Salamence with the Intimidate plus the type resistance. Uh, so, but also, crucially, not dealing damage to her own Tapu Koko. <laughs> Tapu Koko stays around. Uh, maybe if Tapu Koko uh, can outlast the Reflect, maybe he can go for another one later on. Mm -hmm. uh, Salamence has, I believe, only revealed the Bulldoze, so you do have to respect that as well. Metagross mm -hmm. right now it seems like it's in decent position to come back out, but instead Garchomp comes out. Yeah, they're both of the dragons, so we know that uh, Michael does have both of his Dragon-type Pokemon and Metagross in the back. So Trista conserving Vanillux is very smart right here. That will be her win, win condition. What a duo out on the field for Michael. It's the legendary dream duo <laughs> of Salamence and Garchomp. Double dragons. Double dragons all the way. Week, eight times week to ice <laughs> with <laughs> the Vanillux in the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you do have to time it carefully. Uh, you want to make sure that the Vanillix comes in. Uh, we just looked at the turns. Mm -hmm. Vanillix does come in on a turn when Hail ends, so that's going to be nice, yeah. unless it comes in right now. <laughs> yeah. So Trista will want to conserve her Vanillix uh, to make sure that she can get the Hail back up. And of course, we do still have the final Pokemon on her team. So Trista's actually going to switch in. Snorlax is the final Pokemon. So basically the same Pokemon she brought game one, but in a different order this time around. Trista protecting her Tapu Koko right now. Uh, just trying to see what uh, Michael's double dragons are going to do. Garchomp is going to protect. Here comes Bulldoze. Bulldoze coming out from that Salamence. So good switch right there from Trista. Snorlax is already not a speed Pokemon. Does not care. Does not care about getting its speed drop. In fact, it actually wants to get its speed drop. Well, why not? It's not going to be moving first unless it's in Trick Room anyway, so might as well lower the speed. There goes the terrain as well. So Snorlax now in a good position here. Uh, at this point, Michael and Trista both know that the win is going to come down to whether or not Vanillux is going to be able to get back in here and start firing off uh, blizzards. Yeah. So. And you had to time it just right because if you... S well, you don't want to switch in because you can easily get your Vanillux KO'd. Mm -hmm. And Vanillux really is your answer to this duo, of s this double dragon duo. Yeah. So... I mean, Snorlax is no slouch itself. May still be able to, you know, set up if it has, you know, Belly Drum or Curse and be a threat on its own. And we did also see this, the high horsepower earlier. It whiffed a couple of times, but it is an option that threatens the Metagross that is now in the Ooh. field. But Metagross switching in is too heavy to be lifted. And Michael just going for a Swords Dance on his Garchomp. 
Snorlax does go for the belly drum. So Trista will cut her Snorlax's health in half and max out its attack, uh, activate her berry. But a free switch in there for Metagross and a Swords Dance for Michael's Garchomp. Yeah, and Reflect wears off too. So uh, there is a chance because Tapu Koko can easily just set back up that Reflect. Mm -hmm. And then Garchomp, if it goes for another Tectonic Rage on that Snorlax, it's going to be close. It should be able to survive because of the Reflect as long as Tapu Koko can get up a Reflect. Yeah. But it also has to survive another attack from Metagross as well. So it's going to be a tough call. It could uh, have to take a... a you could have just sky drop the Garchomp as well, pick it up into the sky, and then true. KO the Metagross. Uh, you do have to be careful, though, because Salmon's can easily just switch in, possibly trying to eat up a so many high options. horsepower. So a Too lot of options, options for both players. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when that happens? But in the... But... Uh, Crucially for Trista, she does still have the Vanillax in the back. So these aren't her only options here. Yeah. She can win with these Pokemon, but she doesn't have to. Yeah, so Tapu Koko now using Reflect here, trying to make sure that the Tectonic Rage will not pick up a KO on Snorlax. So, ugh. Yeah. Well, here comes that Tectonic Rage, so we will see exactly how much work that Reflect is doing. Again, Garchomp getting a Swords Dance boost is no slouch when it comes to any kind of physical attacking here. But it also depends on whether or not Trista decided to target down that Garchomp as well. Right. Predicting that uh, the Metagross protect. protect. Mm -hmm. Well, here comes the Tectonic Rage onto Snorlax. Will still deal a lot of damage, but thanks to the Reflect, Ooh, not enough. Got it. Snorlax gets the return onto Garchomp. Will knock that Pokemon out. No Vanillux needed to knock out that Dragon. And no rough skin damage either, so Snorlax is still going to be sitting around relatively pretty. Yeah, and again, now it comes down to whether or not Metagross can pick up the KO on the Snorlax behind mm -hmm. that Reflect. Yeah, and Metagross, having already just protected that last turn, leaves itself open to a potential attack from this Tapu Koko. Yeah, but uh, Tapu Koko, I don't know. No uh, terrain up anymore. I think right now one of the things that Tapu Koko should be doing is sky dropping that Salamence to make sure that maybe Snorlax will be able to survive. But, mm. uh, of course, it's going to be close. You know, Metagross <laughs> has a high attacking stat, but Snorlax is hiding behind a Reflect. But Snorlax is at low health, so it's so close. Yeah, and I believe we already saw a, a hammer arm come out from that Metagross as well. Yeah, so. so it should. Yeah, you're right. It should be able to KO. So, uh, you still have Garchomp in the back mm -hmm. to try to deal and with that Vanillax. Metagross. Yeah. Still have ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you save this element to get KO'd by by Vanillax. Exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just say. say oh! oh! And there is uh, the reason why Metagross is uh, one of the most frustrating Pokemon to use. Well, it hit the top of Coco, though. Oh, right. It went yeah. to the top of Coco. It, yeah. Maybe Didn't even try to knock out the Snorlax. Maybe expecting it to switch, so that Snorlax gets back. It's Figgy Berry, heals back up, and this is good position for Trista. Wow. Nice. Nice sky drop play there from Trista, using that again as another pseudo protect. Uh, baiting Michael's Metagross into going for the Zen Headbutt on it while Snorlax recovered up its health with that recycle. Salamence now is freed from the Sky Drop, uh, will take negligible damage, and launch a Bulldoze to activate Metagross's weakness policy, and also deal a pretty decent amount of damage to that Metagross. We are getting in a position where this Tapu Koko could all, like any of these Pokemon on Trista's team, could potentially just knock out that Metagross and open the door for the Vanillux. Hammer Arm connects onto that Snorlax, gonna do a lot of damage with that weakness Whoa, policy. Enough, yep. yep. That weakness policy is going to make it super easy to knock out that Snorlax. Hammer Arm dropping its speed does mean, though, that uh, they're, it's we're going to be relying on Bullet Punch from now on. Yes, yes, it does, and it's 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 a close battle. Mm -hmm. uh, oh boy, uh, Vanillax is there to take care of the Salamence, but right now I. You have to be careful because uh, you gotta watch, out for that, you gotta watch out for that Metagross Protect. Garchomp naturally outspeeds the Salamence, so it is in better position, but if you don't play it right, you could still possibly uh, end up with a misplay. Yep. And uh, that's what it's going to come down to, to see if we get a Game 3 or not. Yeah. Uh, probably go for a Sky Drop here on that Salamence. Just take it up in the sky and also allow your Garchomp to Earthquake mm -hmm. uh, on the way down. You know, just KO yourself. Uh, Top of Coco no did take the Bulldoze, though. That's true. Maybe if you have access to protect, protect. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, just click protect. Yeah. And then try to figure it out for the next turn. Yep. And well, well, it looks like Metagross is the Pokemon that's going to be protecting this time around. Garchomp just going straight for an Earthquake will only hit Trista's own Tapu Koko. Not going to be able to deal damage to Metagross or Salamence because of that. And uh, Yeah, that Bulldoze was huge. Yeah, that Bulldoze. Uh, because now Salamence opens up for an attack here. Ooh. Another bulldoze. Okay. 
Bulldoze onto Garchomp, will drop its speed here, not deal a lot of damage, but uh, allow that Salamence to move before the Garchomp. Yeah, and now Vanillix is forced to come in, and now Metagross actually gets the chance to bullet punch it, so mm -hmm. again, that Bulldoze from before, making sure that Tapu Koko cannot pick up that Salamence from a Sky Drop. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, Earthquake is a very good ability, but, uh, you know, it kind of have to remember that it hits your own Pokemon. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it, the Reflect is still up, so it's... But the Weakness Policy activated, that, yeah. that's the big part Basically right there. Basically negates it. Yeah. Not even that, but it will still do more damage than that Reflect will protect, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Such a close game leading up to the, to the finale here. Yeah, but it looks like Michael is in pretty good position to continue his Cinderella story and be one game away from making it to day two of Swiss. Here comes the bullet punch from Metagross onto Vanillux. Will pick up the KO there. And it, since that bulldoze hit Garchomp, should be enough to allow that Salamence to outspeed. Dragon Pulse will seal it up. Michael Lanzano will defeat Tristan Medin and become 6-2 and two and be one game away from day two Swiss. Unfortunate for Trista. I always enjoy seeing Vanillix do well at a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, she's already brought it to the top eight of the Toronto Regional Championships. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. And I must say that Michael Lanzano played exceptionally well to be able to bring Garchomp and Salamence versus a Scarf Vanillix. So yeah. well played by Michael Lanzano, even though that Vanillix was ready to just blizzard up those double dragons. Yeah, it's really hard to, to play around a Vanillix if your team is double dragons like yeah. that. I mean, that's, you know, we saw Vanillix be very popular even for a brief moment back in like 2011 because of that. You, yeah. know, you can double up and triple up and quadruple up or octuple up in that case <laughs> on ice weaknesses without really noticing. And uh, Vanillix, especially since it got the snow warning ability, now now able to fire off 100% accurate blizzards, uh, you know, it can punish it, but that Metagross did so much work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, such great board positioning by Michael in order to uh, get that position the way he wanted it to be, because if you thought about it, like, he got in the Metagross at the right time. Vanillix was never in at the right time. Right. And even though Trista led with Vanillix against a dragon, mm -hmm. he still was able to find his way out. So exceptional, exceptional board play from Michael Lanzano. But again, Trista also played exceptionally well, too. She has some very cool techs. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a, a really interesting matchup there. Of course, like we mentioned, Michael needs a miracle if he's going to make <laughs> it to Worlds. Uh, Trista, of course, has already qualified, so we will be seeing more of her in Anaheim. Uh, but Michael, at 6-2 and two now, needs one more win to guarantee his admission into Day 2 of Swiss. And he needs that second day of Swiss in order to make it to the top cut. And he needs that top cut in order to make it to finals, and he needs to win the tournament to make it to Worlds. <laughs> basically what it, yeah. what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be really interested in watching uh, Michael's the rest of the tournament. Uh, well played to him. Uh, super interesting matchup. Um, but we do also have more games happening. It's Swiss, so everyone's playing at the same time. Yeah, so. we're joining a match in progress. Yeah, we are getting ready to jump into another one of our round eight matches. It's going to be Colin Hire versus Alberto Lara. Multiple it regional champions between the two. Yep. Uh, a very strong finish in the 2014 World Championships by Colin Hire. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen him on stream multiple times. Alberto, of course, hailing from Southern California. Uh, he's won multiple regional championships as well, as well as uh, performing pretty well this season. He doesn't have yep. a regional championship under his belt, but multiple top cut finishes. Yeah. West Coast versus Midwest Coast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gulf Coast? Gulf Coast? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, and I believe we're ready to uh, jump into this game of Colin Ahire versus Alberto Lara. Very interesting matchup here. Uh, Alberto is on the right side and on the top of your screen, and we are seeing uh, Tapu Lele uh, versus Colin Hire, who is running that Porygon 2 and the Tapu Coco at 1-1. One and one. Again, these are also 5-2 and two players. The winner keeps their tournament dreams alive for the potential of making it into day two of Swiss. Yeah, and it looks like Porygon 2 actually just set up a trick room, so uh, we're a bit late into turn one, but no damage mm -hmm. has really been dealt. Some switches, maybe some protects happen first, but uh, Porygon 2 setting up that trick room. Top of Coco mm -hmm. now going to have a pretty good matchup against the Celestila, so yeah. All right, well, Porygon 2 going for that Thunderbolt, not going to be as powerful uh, as it might want to because the terrain is psychic. 
avoids the Leech Seed, while Tapu Lele is going to be able to fire off one of those really powerful Psychics we've been talking about onto Tapu Koko. Just going to Volt Switch and get the heck out of there. It is a speed Pokemon, and it is under Trick Room, and it needs something else to come in. Yeah, and looking at Colin's team, we didn't get to mention it to you guys in team preview just yet, but Colin going to be running Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Metagross, Salamence, Porygon2, and the Gigalith that just switched mm -hmm. in over on Alberto's side. It's going to be that Garchomp, Arcanine, Tapu Koko, Driftbloom, and Tapu Lele, and Celesteela that you see on your screen. So more Salamence and Metagross. <laughs> yeah, so surprising literally no one. Uh, Colin is going to be running uh, a Trick Room version of that Metagross team, though. <laughs> yes, Colin is notorious for running Trick Room. Mm -hmm. uh, he pretty much always has Trick Room on his teams, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Alberto on the other side. Uh, you know, now has to deal with this Gigalith. Uh, Gigalith will be able to do a lot of damage. Um, yeah. Continental Crush, Stone Edge, Rock Slide. Uh, Celesteel, you know, it can take a couple Stone Edges, mm -hmm. but at the same time, a Continental Crush at that much damage might be able to pick up the KO. And it's definitely not going to want to take a Stone Edge critical hit. No, not at all. And we do know that Stone Edge has an increased critical hit ratio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this Tapu Lele especially is probably feeling uh, a little bit out of place here in the Trick Room. It likes a, a weird battlefield, but it doesn't like the dimensions being twisted and weird. Just going to go for a Protect this time around, while Gigalith is just going to go for the Rock Slide, not going for any of the more powerful Rock-type attacks here. Rock Slide will connect with Celesteela, uh, dealing a good amount of damage there. Porygon2 also going for a Thunderbolt into Celesteela, so Colin trying really hard to chip down that Celesteela. Finally, the Leech Seed will connect on Alberto's side, so being able to seed that Porygon 2 and start recovering a little bit of health on his Celesteela. Yeah, not sure if that was the correct Pokemon to Leech Seed in that situation, because uh, Gigalith has more hit points, so if you really want your Celesteela to be able to heal back up, you kind of want to seed the Pokemon with more hit points. I mean, it's still it's not bad. It's one of the only ways to get Porygon 2 off the field, though. Yeah, it is, <laughs> which is nice, which is nice, uh, but you also kind of want to force that Gigalith out, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, yeah, so actually, never mind. Gigalith, uh, according to the one, HP numbers, one, one more hit, hit point. point. <laughs> never mind then. It didn't matter which one. Oh, those uh, fractions can, yeah. really, can really be the, the make or break in these game three settings. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add up at some point, right? All right, well, the seed does force Porygon 2 to switch out, but I think Colin is pretty happy to switch his Metagross in uh, against the Celesteela and a Tapu Lele. Alberto does have to retreat that Tapu Lele in favor of Garchomp. Uh, which does have a much better matchup against both of these Pokemon, but will still be the fastest, aka the slowest thing on the field here. Ooh, and now we see the Continental Crush come out here. Yeah, Continental Crush, crush from the Gigalith. Celesteela did just protect itself. Uh, so if it did target down the Celesteela, it will be taking reduced damage. And of course, Garchomp also resisting the Rock type. It is going to be the Garchomp, Ooh. so just some damage off onto Garchomp. A pretty good switch in there for Alberto, uh, going to avoid the one-hit KO from one of those attacks, but still taking a pretty reasonable amount of damage there. Yeah, considering Garchomp resisted that, that mm -hmm. I mean, Giggle has this guy high attacks that. Uh, that did a lot more than I would have enjoyed <laughs> if my Garchomp was out on the field. But like you said, Garchomp does have a very positive matchup in this in this case, but if it can get out of trick room, out, if it can get out of trick room, there's only one more turn you can easily protect here. But of course, that's actually going to open up options for Colin to, you know, do some switching to get himself in better board position. Maybe get that Porygon two back in, mm -hmm. set up for another trick room. Uh, you know, how many trick rooms are we going to see in this game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a game with Colin higher, so it could be a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Garchomp can easily protect, but of course, that just opens up options for Colin to kind of adjust the board to what he thinks might be better position outside of trick room. Yeah, absolutely, and of course. Uh, Alberto just trying to protect that Celesteela. This is one of the things that you risk running into when you have that Celesteela, is it gets low and you focus on protecting it too much. Instead, Alberto is going to assume that Colin's going to play safe and switch out Garchomp for that Tapu Lele to capitalize on the end of Trick Room. But Colin goes for the Rock Slide instead, connects to both the Celesteela and the Tapu Lele. Alberto will be able to get the Leech Seed off onto that Gigalith, but Metagross also going for an attack on that Tapu Lele. The Zen Headbutt will pick up that KO. So Alberto was not able to put as much pressure as he may have wanted, you know, bluffing that Protect on Garchomp, tried to get Tapu Lele and tried to sneak it in before the end of Trick Room. A double-edged sword right there, which is this battlefield, or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the terrain, the psychic terrain, kind of boosting that Zen Headbutt. Yeah. Probably there giving is also, it just enough. There is also the option that the Garchomp does not have Protect. We're just jumping in 
into this game, so it's possible that we may have seen like a choice item or something like that. Uh, so Alberto may have just known that he needed to sacrifice a Pokemon there. Yeah, and of course now Garchomp can come back in. Uh, this is actually a slightly better position for the Garchomp to come back in now that Tri mm -hmm. uh, uh, Trick comes over, but you know what? Tapu Koko is going to take the field instead. Yep, Tapu Koko comes out on the field, sets the electric terrain with its electric surge, uh, kind of uh, threatening its partner Celesteela a little bit there, but uh, Tapu Koko should be... Uh, should be feeling pretty reasonably confident to be able to dish out some damage here alongside Celesteela. Yeah, and well, Metagross does not mind, really. Like, uh, Tapu Koko can, well, Tapu Koko just protects here. Yeah, Tapu Koko just trying to protect, not even setting anything up for Celesteela here. Gigalith goes for the protect as well, so maybe just trying to burn some protects. Metagross goes for the Zen Headbutt into Tapu Koko's Protect, and Celesteela sets up the second Leech Seed, so has both of Colin's Pokemon seeded now, can start recovering a lot of health and uh, get itself back up to you know a very reasonable hit point level. Yeah, and uh, the Sandstorm actually subsided, so right now mm -hmm. this Tapu Koko will be, do will be doing a lot more damage to that Gigalith because the special defense boost is gone. Mm -hmm. So good positioning for Alberto still. Of course, Garchomp still in the back. Does not mind facing off against Metagross and Gigalith. But look at all this health that's just being drained from Celesteela. Mm -hmm. So Alberto really going to try to probably set up for a Celesteela endgame here. Yeah, Celesteela getting about 30% of its hit points back just from those two Leech Seeds, which is uh, no slouch. You, if you're Alberto right now, you kind of want to predict which one's going to switch out at which time mm -hmm. and go for a Leech Seed just to prevent or, you know, see them on the switch. Yeah. It could be a double switch, but at least you'll still have one seed up. Yeah. If you're planning for a Celesteela in-game, maintaining the Leech Seed pressure is really crucial because Celesteela can deal a lot of damage uh, if you're, you know, heavy slamming the right Pokemon. Um, but... For the most part, it's really just going to want to keep itself healthy with that Leech Seed. So Gigalith is the switch out for Colin, bringing in the Porygon 2. Ooh. Ooh. We are going to see the Z move coming out from Alberto. The Tapunium Z. Yeah, the Tapunium Z coming out. It's going to be using <laughs> the Guardians of Lola attack, which is going to do 75% damage, or bring you down 75% of, of your, your hit current points. hit yep. points. So big damage coming out. <laughs> You've never seen this? No, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, Alberto, in his past teams or iterations of this team, Ooh. actually enjoys using the Tapunium Z to kind of to kind of like weaken a lot of Pokemon, prevent Trick from coming up. But of course, trying to protect itself into yeah. the protect. Unfortunate for Alberto. Uh, the heavy slam from Celesteela coming out onto Porygon Two, going to deal a reasonable amount of damage. That was kind of a pathetic Guardian smash, right? Yeah. You see that Guardian, you expect it to deal a lot more damage, <laughs> but the Metagross's Protect is just too mighty. It um, Look at it. It just looks like you have to go through <laughs> so much to get to the core of Metagross, right? True. Yeah. So right now, I want to say that the Metagross might find this an opportunity to switch out. Mm -hmm. So again, Celesteela, it can take a Thunderbolt from the Porygon 2, I believe. Mm -hmm. So... Although it is unfortunate that the terrain is up for Alberto's side because you don't want to risk it. Yeah, it's never a good thing to risk extra extra boosts for your electric type attacks, attacks when you're really trying to get that uh, Celesteela in game. The Nature's Madness, though, does what the Guardians of Alola could not do and actually deals a good amount of damage to that Porygon 2, cutting it in half again for this heavy slam to just Ooh. barely miss out on the KO. Porygon 2 sticking around with two hit points and sets up the Trick Room. And that, again, Alberto just stalled out that Trick Room the first time around, and now it's back up. Yeah, wow. That is unfortunate, you know, right there, really going for that Nature's Madness to kind of weaken that uh, Porygon 2. Mm -hmm. And then Heavy Slamming, trying to get that KO before a Trick Room or a Thunderbolt could go off on that Celesteela. Uh, Celesteela is almost back at full health right now. Not mm -hmm. bad. Uh, Celesteela should be able to survive. Now Porygon 2 has to decide, well, recover or do I try to go on offense? Definitely try to recover here. Mm -hmm. You know, keep that around just a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, if Porygon 2 can get off a free recover, if Metagross is able to deal some damage to that Tapu Koko, we know the Garchomp is the last Pokemon in the back. Uh, Alberto is going to really need to keep his Pokemon healthy uh, and find a way to sort of stall this Trick Room out because Tapu Koko and Garchomp are not going to get the win for you under Trick Room. Not at all. All right, well, Porygon 2 goes for the recover here, and Celesteela going for a Leech Seed again, but Porygon 2 avoids it. Another Zen Headbutt coming out from Metagross will target that Garchomp. Garchomp just barely hanging on there as well. Metagross taking some damage with that rough skin. And Celesteela is back 
healing up with its leftovers. And then, of course, the Leech Seed coming out from Metagross. Alberto is slowly whittling away Colin's Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, there's still the Gigalith in the back. I don't recall. I believe the Top of Coco is also in the back for Colin as well. Mm -hmm. Right, so Colin's saving that Top of Coco for just a little bit later, you know, in a better position to just pick up KOs on that Celesteela. So, oh boy, it's going to be an end game for. It's going to be a Celesteela end game that Alberto's going for, like we've already yeah. mentioned. No, Metagross is almost KO'd, but at this point, Colin kind of wants Metagross to get KO'd because Metagross isn't really doing much and it's not that great in the Celesteela matchup. Yeah. All, all Colin wants out of his Metagross is to help him get to a point where it's just Celesteela. Yeah. And then he can start doubling up on that on that slot and uh, you know break through the iron defenses of the bamboo satellite. Yep. <laughs> There's the Ice Beam coming out from Porygon 2 onto Garchomp. So Porygon 2 is going to score the knockout this time. Garchomp goes down. Celesteela launches a heavy slam here onto Porygon 2. Uh, not quite enough uh, to get down to uh, where it was before. Another Zen headbutt coming out from uh, Metagross deals a little bit of damage back to Celesteela. Uh, but Celesteela and Tapu Koko, the final Pokemon for Alberto, and Trick Room is still up. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard to stall at this one, but one more turn and Metagross gets KO'd by the Leech Seed as mm -hmm. uh, Celesteela is going to need a try to maintain as much health as possible. Uh, the terrain dissipates, but of course, Top right is going to come right back. And of course, uh, right now, what you want to do is you want to time it so that Colin won't get the benefits of an electric terrain. So Celesteela has to stall out five or four turns mm -hmm. and force that uh, Top of Coco in at some point. But Metagross is just going to get KO'd right away. Yep. But being up four Pokemon now to two, Colin is in a pretty good position. Uh, at this point, especially with Celesteela setting up, you have to start thinking about time uh, and how do you make sure that you win on time if you need to, to use that win condition. So Colin keeping his Pokemon healthy could be a pretty big factor in making sure that he is still uh, all set up to win on time. And Porygon 2 recovering is another factor in that. <laughs> Keeping yeah. that Pokemon around. It's going to be hard to break this Porygon, too, because the Trick Room's up. Mm -hmm. Another uh, heavy slam coming out from Celesteela. Uh, we've been seeing that do about you know 46, 45 damage every time. Zen Headbutt into the Tapu Koko, just trying to... Uh, Colin trying to cheat some extra damage. Cheat a knockout out there that he did not deserve because Alberto was always going to protect that slot. And he actually just saw Colin salute the Metagross. Metagross did its <laughs> job. Uh, sleep tight, well done, Metagross. Metagross. Sleep tight, Metagross. Gigalith now out uh, for uh, the final turns of, of Trick Room. Uh, able to really threaten with the uh, the Rock Slide, could pick up a KO on the Tapu Koko potentially, and also just continue to deal damage to Celesteela, which is, you know, missing some of its Leech Seed now. Yeah, and the Continental Crush has already come out. Uh, mm -hmm. Now the Celesteela really needs to set up a Leech Seed. Porygon 2 is not seeded yet. Uh, mm -hmm. gonna, find a, gonna try to find an opportunity here to seed both Pokemon and just slowly wait this game out. It looks like on the timer there's about seven minutes left. Yep. So this is a Celesteela game right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with Gigalith, though, Gigalith and Porygon 2 uh, are both going to deal a lot of damage to that Celesteela, even with Leech Seed damage. So uh, there's always the risk that one of Porygon 2 or Gigalith just get a critical hit, and that's it for Celesteela. Yeah, that is a possibility. Oh, double no protect double protect! Fails. Gigalith's Rock Slide connects! So no double protect, Rock Slide connects to both Pokemon. Tapu Koko actually tanking that pretty well. A critical hit onto the Celesteela. The aforementioned critical hit. Ooh. A Thunderbolt into Tapu Koko will pick that Pokemon up. Another critical hit as well, just gravy on top of that one. Uh, so Colin has both his Gigalith and Porygon 2 out. Another heavy slam from Celesteela will deal some damage to that Porygon 2. Again, uh, we're seeing it get to soar almost into two-hit KO range. This is actually range that Celesteela could knock out this Porygon 2 with another heavy slam uh, now that Trick Room has ended. Yeah, and it appears as though Gigalith has access to Rock Slide. Uh, we haven't seen all the moves yet. It mm -hmm. does have access to... Uh, sorry, the Continental Crush, which a lot of players use uh, Stone Edge as the base for, so Celesteela can always dodge some Gigalith attacks, but it also has to survive uh, a bunch... Ooh! Oh! One hit point on Porygon 2! There's the Thunderbolt onto Celesteela. Super effective. Rock Slide from Gigalith will not miss, will connect, and Colin is going to break Celesteela's wall. He will win this set 2-1, and he will become 6-2. and two. Needs one more win to guarantee Day 2 Swiss. Alberto, unfortunately, drops to 5-3, and, three and uh, that... 
almost eliminates his chances depending on how the uh, remaining number of players mm -hmm. are that uh, are X and 2. If there's we less have than fewer than 32, he can still make it by being in the top 32. Yeah. Uh, but that is a uh, that is not where you want to be. You want to be in Colin's position. You want to be, you know, I need to win the next match and then I'm in. Not yeah. I need to win the next match and then hope that the math works out <laughs> in my favor and bust out your calculator and figure out exactly how many of your opponents needed to win how many matches to actually make your, get yourself into the top 32. <laughs> uh, that's much less fun than just winning your matches. Winning an inning. Yeah. Yeah. So, great set. Well, we only got to see the last game, but... Yeah, that was a fun game, though. These two are, like... Players that have played before, they may have played at regionals before, mm -hmm. and oh boy, uh, these two teams are actually very similar. Uh, Colin actually changed some things. Uh, the last tournament he was at, I believe, was the Seattle Regional Championships, mm -hmm. where he had you know Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Porygon 2, and Gigalith. This time, changing up with Metagross and Salamence. Yeah. Alberto using a variant of this team throughout the entire season. This is a team that he's very comfortable with. He's very comfortable using Celesteela. So, you know, both these players, they, I mean. It's true. Like some players do have certain play styles, right? Yeah. We talked about Colin before. Oh, Colin is a notorious trick room user. Sure enough, he set up trick room twice. Yep. Some players they struggle to even get up, get <laughs> like use trick room once, yeah. right? So, Alberto really plays a much longer game with the Celesteela. You know, he was definitely trying to set up an end game for that Celesteela yeah. to set up some leech seeds. You know, all right, I need to keep my Celesteela out on the field. But Colin saw through that and he realized, well. All right, let's think back to a couple of uh, tournaments ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Seattle Regional Championships, both players were there. Uh, both players you know, saw each other play there. So Colin thought to himself, all right, I need to maintain all my Celesteela counters because you know, I believe that Alberto's going to put all his eggs in one basket in that Celesteela. Yep. I'm really interested in that team because of how uh, we've been seeing the Salamence Metagross core uh, in a number of players, um, but the way that Colin adapted it into his own style of play, adding it to the Trick Room element, I think is a really fascinating uh, way to take that sort of that two Pokemon combo that's been doing so well. Um, but you know, I can only guess at you know Colin's motivations or his team building process or how he feels about anything ever, um, but. We can actually hear directly from Colin himself about how he's reacting to the tournament because <laughs> he is speaking right now with our friend Anna down on the floor. Take it away, Anna. Marathon of a match. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling honestly really relieved. Like, that was a close set, and I'm really glad to have pulled it through. Yeah, tell us a little bit about how you're standing here in the tournament, what you have to do, what you have to win. So, I started out 0 and 2, so. I had no wins for two games, and then now I'm six and two, so I've won six straight. And if I win one more, I'll be able to make it to the top cut of the tournament. And then if I make it to top cut and I get top 32, I'll be able to attend the Pokemon World Championships. So are you kind of thriving under the pressure then? Do you think that's what gets you into high gear? Honestly, I was really nervous about the pressure because I knew I had to perform well. But once I started 0-2, I just felt something within me, and I haven't been able to stop since. You're just in the zone. You're on fire. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Tell us about that last match. What was uh, what was the determining factor in being able to come out on top? Um, it was definitely forcing him to leave Celesteela in so I would be able to attack the partner without them being able to threaten me inside of Trick Room. So it was just mainly manipulating Trick Room in my favor, and I consider myself one of the best Trick Room players. So. Yeah, I was going to say, the casters mentioned that you're kind of notable for Trick Room. You're using Trick Room again. How is that working out for you? Um, Trick Room is my favorite move, and if it wasn't in Pokemon, I don't know if I'd play. Um, so it's working out really well for me. This team is more Trick Room oriented than my le last few. So, What is it about you as a player that makes Trick Room really agree with you, do you think? I think it's the amount of bulk you can, invest, like, you can train into your Pokemon because... They don't have to be fast, they just have to be bulky and strong. So it lets you free up uh, some ways you can train your Pokemon to make them much bulkier and much stronger than others. If people at home who are watching want to imitate your play style, where do they start to make something like that happen? Um, I think just playing around with hard Trick Room, like just six Pokemon dedicated to setting up hard Trick Room, because that's where I began as a player and I spent two years mastering hard Trick Room. And then now I've developed into a much more um, successful player because of my manipulation of it and I'm able to use it still today but not as focused as it once was. Well and now you are at the point where you're looking forward into that world championship you have one more match to play how confident are you feeling and what are you gonna do to make sure that you're in the right frame of mind? Um, I'm feeling really confident um, I haven't been able to stop like I said since I started out so I'm feeling really confident and thanks to my two good friends Conan and Michael they've kept me going through the whole day 
Um, and I just haven't been able to stop and we've just been playing together and cheering each other on the whole day and yeah, we're, we're all doing pretty well. I'm hearing that from so many players that they're getting support from their friends and that's how they're moving forward. So I'm glad that you have that too. Thanks for sharing all of this time and insight with us. And now it's time to head back to our casters. Thanks, Anna.